these are some of the main lessons I learned the past two years in Miami is, you know, it doesn't matter how many women, it doesn't matter how much money is coming in, it doesn't matter how many uh, substances that may find their, their way into your body. It's a situation where if, if you're moving without God, you're, you're a fish without water. It's like a Chinese knot, like a, like a hand knot, you finger know, those, yeah, like the finger trap where you think that um, you getting more of the thing will loosen in the knot, but you actually have to like, when it comes to suffering, is you actually have to lean into suffering and suffer more to be able to get more freedom. After a long night of partying at about like 5 a.m. in the morning, I was driving home. I saw a bunch of cars swerving and a bunch of stuff happening and ended up looking over and there was a car on fire and upside down and it didn't look like anybody had responded to the situation yet. Long story short, I ended up pulling this lady out of the burning car and it was, uh, it ended up making the news. Somebody was recording it. It was, an, it was like a super, super pivotal moment. So you would say you saved the, the woman's life? What's up, guys? I'm here at Vice City Kava. I'm sitting next to my friend Daniel, uh, also known as Water Dad. We're going to talk about a lot of cool things. Um, he's going to share about, about Christ. He's going to share about how we met. I'm sure a lot of other things in his life. But with no further ado, we have Water Dad. How exciting is that? I'll, I'll, I'll do edits. You know, here. Toasty! <laughs> very cool. I'm very excited to be doing this podcast with you, Michael. Yeah, thank you for thank you for coming. Um, when I, when I first met you, I I didn't know where you stood, right? Like spiritually and all this kind of stuff. Um, so I, you know, to to break the fourth wall. So I I work at the farmers market in Coral Gables. I mean, in Coconut Grove, and I met I met Daniel. And we started talking about faith and God and, and different st kinds of stuff. What's funny is I don't remember exactly what the conversation was. You might. But I remember thinking that he was an interesting dude. And we, we, we decided to um, exchange numbers. I had no idea where he was at in his faith walk. I meet a lot of people at the market that are that have different belief systems, whether it's New Age, whether it's Christianity, whether they're kind of still learning or whatever at the same time as somebody that wants to be a conduit for God's love I'm going to listen to anybody and and see where they're at so I started following this guy and I've just seen this guy from like doing boat parties and like all this crazy <laughs> stuff and then next thing I know I see him sharing and posting some of the most based stuff and I was like wow this guy's like really with it Fast forward, I don't know, a month or something later, he's getting baptized. <laughs> he's like going up against Satan, writing all kinds of stuff. And I'm just like, man. And then right away, I hit him up. I, I, and I can't even remember what it was exactly, what he wrote. But I was like, man, like, I need to get you on the pod. It, it, it was 100% Holy Spirit led. So, yeah, man, if you can, bro, want to share like a little bit of your journey, your faith walk? I mean, were you always as close to Christ? Is this a, a new evolution for you, a new metamorphosis? Um, I'm really interested in knowing that. Yeah. So back to that faithful day. What a what a what a fun day. What a beautiful day that was. Uh, very rarely will you catch me naturally at a farmer's market. So and I couldn't even tell you the, the conversation either, but we connected and uh, we stayed in touch, and I was way less uh, rocking with uh, Jesus Christ then. Jesus Christ! I was I was doing my own thing in, in a large way, and part of what started this development was, I mean, even a, I believe it was a year prior to that time, maybe about a year and a half before that day, is, um, you know, it, it feels like God follows spiritual laws, or follows uh, follows law, and uh, he's not going to come barging in the door if you don't want him in there. That's part of free will. And I invited him in, and I said, uh, God, if you if you need me, like you know, I'm like I'll do what you ask me to do. And then uh, a very extreme test came my way, and uh, I performed well. And then even then, it was kind of it was it made my life harder for a long time, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And then. I went back to doing my own thing, and then it was probably about another year, year and a half after that, that I really started to go towards Christ. What 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 was that? I mean, if if you, if you care to share, go into detail about that that test that you had to endure. 
uh, I don't, I don't like talking about it, but okay. So it was a situation where, um, I was watching a video and in the video, somebody was doing something incredibly heroic. And, uh, that's when the, when I, I reached out to God and I was like, Hey, if you, if you need me to do something like that for your people, like, you know, I'm here for it. And, um, after a long night of partying at about like 5 a.m. in the morning, I was driving home from from that party uh, from a good friend of mine's house, uh, and the, I I saw a bunch of cars swerving and a bunch of stuff happening, and ended up looking over and there was a car on fire, and upside down, and it didn't look like anybody had responded to the situation yet. A semi truck swerves out of the way, and then I see kind of the scene that's going on, and um, yeah, man. So I, I responded to that, and it ended up being a situation where, long story short, I ended up pulling this lady out of the burning car, and it was uh, it ended up making the news. Somebody was recording it. It was an it was like a super, super pivotal moment. Wow. So you would say you saved the the woman's life? I, I don't feel good with those words, but yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Wow, man, that's amazing, man. Yeah. Wow, and um. What was that feeling like afterwards or that night or that, you know, the, the, the day afterwards in the morning or did you just kind of feel like a sense of awe, you know, spiritually afterwards? Like kind of, you know, once it's already passed, kind of like digesting that yeah. what happened to you or what you did for someone. What's what's crazy is the emotional state didn't pass for, I would say, like two days. It felt like it, it's kind of like a, your car getting stuck with like the uh, act like it was in gear, but. Uh, like your car getting stuck with the gas pedal on it felt like my adrenaline was still at the same high like well after the the first day so it was it it felt like a state of shock it felt like i had done something good but ultimately my adrenaline was still up and then ultimately i I end up actually experiencing like quite a low after that which was crazy really yeah you would think that like you you did this great thing like oh you're gonna feel really great but some other things were happening and some things happen and then uh, memories came in and all kinds of different stuff. And it was just like a, a large processing time and it ended up kind of putting me into a, like a funk for a while. Really? Do you think it was a result of that or it was just, Oh, a, for sure. For yeah. Sure, yeah. So you think maybe it was just kind of like the other team, the demonic kingdom or whatever you want to call it kind of, you know, seeing the good that you were doing and you kind of being attacked in the negative way, you know, n- that is some of the stuff I've, I've felt lately, but at the time or during that piece, it more of felt um, like I was in a car accident or something of that nature. Like it felt like a like a largely traumatic thing. Like you some, passed on like you got passed on the trauma, maybe that the woman felt almost yeah, something, something like that was going on. And uh, then some other things became like way more difficult. So, yeah, it was it was an interesting time. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, uh, you know, it, it's it's interesting how how in life uh, sometimes you have expectation on, on how you think something's going to happen. And um, and yeah, it might not, not it might not go that way. So it's just being open to, you know, being adaptable to to what's happening and, yep. and realizing that God has a bigger plan, whatever it is. Yep. And you can't really shoehorn your own um, will or, you know, you have to say God's will. Right. Kind of yep. like. The Lord's Prayer, right? That yes. will be done. You know, it's it's crazy you mentioned the Lord's Prayer because I think about that prayer often. And, you know, the prayer is also, it says, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, which implies that his will is 100% done in heaven, but not totally done on earth, which is something I think that's not caught often enough where it's like, you know, the implication of free will and you having the ability to decide to do for the kingdom or to do for the flesh is uh is inherently like baked into that prayer yeah yeah um what's funny about that prayer is uh and i haven't even released this video yet but i did the lord's prayer in in aramaic how was that oh um, i mean i haven't edited that video i can't wait till you guys see it i'm gonna look like a gringo saying trying to speak chinese like it is so bad and butchered and maybe anybody that can that knows that native that tongue would probably laugh at me but at the same time i think i'm still going to post it regardless because god god judges you by your heart you know and 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 you know if 
even if you're not perfect, like well, none of us are perfect, you know, if anything, it's it's endearing to him to for us to see us really trying to reach out to him and, and the means that we think is um, appropriate. Right. You know, with reverence and respect. So, yeah. So anyways, so, yeah. But now that now that we talked about it. I'm going to, yeah, that, that, that's coming you gotta, you gotta out. You got to get that posted. That, that's that coming posted. out, guys. You'll, 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 you'll check that one out. But anyways, yeah, no, uh, going back to, to my brother right here. So, like, you know, obviously, um, as I alluded to with, with the introduction, you know, you make music. And um, that's kind of been, like, your niche. And, and you've been uh, focused on that. And, yeah, just, just give me an update on that. How's the music going? How are you doing? And, um, yeah, if you want to kind of just dive into music making or how you became a musician, uh, you know, and s- some of that kind of stuff. Yeah, music is good. Uh, I, I love the process of making music. I love the process of, um, you know, connecting with people through music. I, I think that the main value add with music is uh, to bring people together and to... You know, it's like a vibrational thing. And when everybody's listening to the same vibration or they're getting the same download, it allows for quite the platform for community and connection. And that's what always uh, drew me to the, like, willing to invest as much as I have into music is not just this, like, selfish pursuit of, like, wanting to express myself. Um, it, it oftentimes, like, there's a lot of uh, abrasion there. It's more of the situation of, like, how much community and how much other people uh, bring value into my life and to have a platform and arenas where we could all come together is uh, is is what motivates me for sure. So, yeah, I, I think that that's an interesting thing to kind of balance, you know, as somebody that's also like an artist and creative. Um, a lot of the times people view art as self-expression only but it's uh it doesn't have to be that way you know you could be using your art in a way for others and you know you're trying to enrich other people's lives or whatever it might be and i think that's more of like you know the excuse me the the holy path like it's more like treating the music like it's sacred you know um you know because if you care about others you care about your fellow brother and sister then all of a sudden you're you know the the music become healing and it could become you know, um, you know, I'm sure you, you, you might, you may or might now know about like cymatics, right? And like how people use sound and, you know, there's like, you know, people do sound healing and bath, sound baths and all that stuff. Yep. But really it's because everything's energy and vi- vibration. So, you know, and then going back into another thing about the gig, uh, megahertz, right? The 432, right? Yep. yep. How, how they have us trapped in, what is it? The four, 440. The 440, which has negative consequences on our body and our soul right and the powers that be do that on purpose to keep us in a low vibrational state sure i mean you could even say that there's an intentionality to it the different tunings different energies have different effects on the system and if if you want to dive into the history of the tuning of music and why music is in the 440 hertz is it started with nazi germany and um So, you know, there's a there's a fun deep dive there in us switching our tuning over and then all these different people who try to debunk like the the tuning not being a big thing on YouTube and all this other stuff. And it it just it it doesn't add up. You know, I'm trying to get away from Nazi Germany and any of the things that they did as much and as often as possible. So, yeah, the programming. Right. Well, I mean, I think that that's that's interesting. Uh, The uh, the people don't realize the influence of all the different world wars and how um, our society has, has changed as a result, right? I mean, I've heard a lot of different conspiracies saying, hey, the Germany never lost, right? And that basically when, when we brought in all the different um, Nazi scientists to NASA, that wasn't us bringing them in, that was them imposing themselves into our culture and basically changing everything. And if you look back around that time, the 1960s, what has happened in this country? It's gone nothing but but down, and it's all been an inside job from the inside. So, you know, based on the way I'm talking, you could probably uh, <laughs> imagine, <laughs> you know, what how I, you know, feel about that. But, uh, you know, at the same time, knowledge is power, and guess what? Who knows if that is is even true, right? History is his story, right? So at the end of the day, you know, you hear of things, you read things, and, 
you take it all with a grain of salt and you try to put together the nuggets of knowledge and, and empower yourself and your community as much as possible. Right. But yeah, no, 100% all the brainwashing techniques, you know, that, that Nazis were doing. I mean, you, you see that, you see that today, <coughs> excuse me, you see that today in modern media. Sure, 100%. Right? And, and I studied marketing, right? And if you look at marketing, a lot of the times in marketing advertising, what you're doing is tapping into someone's psyche, right? Using the correct colors or combinations, or you, re you repeat the same things over and over, six feet away, six feet away, right? right. And, and saying all those things, and then it becomes something that people, um, yeah, they, they get susceptible to that, that programming and brainwashing, right? So... Uh, it's interesting, but yeah, going back to the music, man, I, I really think that, so I listen to 432, like instrumentals, or I'm trying to get work done or whatever, but it's so silly that I have to go on YouTube and type in 432 instrumentals, like why can't just all music just be like blessed and holy, but it's just like, you know, the, the, the Bible will tell you why. Yeah, the Bible the, the will Bible tell, tell you why everything's not blessed and holy and not everything's all sunshine and rainbows and... Oh, uh, you know, we're still dealing with a lot of uh, curses from even Genesis. So it's funny you talked about that. So when I was in, in the hospital, I did a quick YouTube short, which is hilarious. I got like barely any views, but I just felt compelled to do it. But I was reading Genesis starting from the beginning. I was reading the Bible in the whole, in the hospital room. And then I read about, you know, uh, God making uh, Eve from, from, from Adam's rib. And I see my wife there in the bed and I'm just kind of thinking about it. And then because of sin, Eve has to uh, deal with pains in birth. And she's just sitting there complaining about how she's in pain. And I'm just like, whatever. That's what Man, you get, you riblet. Yeah, that, that's what you get, you riblet. No. And then what the funny part is that there was also a part where it's like Adam, because of him, he has to work from the sweat of his brow. And I was like, man, I in that video, I just finished talking about how I don't have enough time because I'm so busy and all I do is work. And I, I have to edit more videos and I have so much hours of content that I haven't edited it yet. And it's just like bags are in my eyes, like so like tired. And I'm just saying this and it's just like, yeah, bro, Adam, dude, <laughs> you're going to work your, your tail off. And it's like, yeah, no kidding, bro. No kidding. It's just funny going back to you saying about the Bible. It's like, man, like people want to think it's all goofy and make pretend. And oh, some man wrote that. It's like, man, it's so holy and divine inspired. It's like it, it's. It's beyond text on, on a paper. It's literally like you're looking at like software. You're looking at like code. It's like you read it and your soul is reading code. And it's just way different than even your mind. It's just really hard for me to articulate. But um. So two things. One, to, to cap off on the 432 conversation that I, I feel like we missed, is don't take our word for it. That's no fun at all. Um, there are, there if you type in a, to uh, any kind of search engine, um, you'll be able to find converters that will take any file of a 440 song and convert it into 432 and listen to both and, and document how you feel. And, and if, if it does make a change in you or it does make you feel a little bit different or you like one version over the other, post about it, talk about it. It's uh, it's something that, you know, we can sit up here and talk and be like, oh, this person did this or this person did that or this tuning, that tuning. But, you know, really getting to the point where you're testing certain things out and you're kind of having, you know, treating yourself like a science experiment at times is, I, I think, uh, wildly valuable. What I like about what he just said is people that have my worldview and his worldview, we like to be scientists. We, we like the scientific method, true science. However, in this day and age, people that believe in quote unquote science, scientism, what they're doing is they are following the science, meaning they're not thinking for themselves. They're not conducting experiments. They're listening to what somebody else told them. And they're saying, hey, this is science. Guys, Conducting your own scientific method. I'm a scientist. I do science. Bill Nye, the science guy in the lab coat, that's not science. That's just you listening to men and regurgitating what they're saying. So I just want to throw that out there. Um, and I'm not saying that from ego. I'm not saying, oh, I'm so great. I'm just saying anybody could do it. This is It's God's method of finding something out. Before we get into that, I want to talk about our sponsors. 
Um, Physicians preferred CBD. Make sure you get some CBD if you have any inflammation, if you have any uh, problems sleeping or need help with um, mind and mood balancing, you can help with homeostasis. Um, get a 33% off discount using promo code MikeBiz. Also, make sure to get some clothes here. Um, you see the Serve Others shirt on faithandbase.com. You have the Love Your Enemies t-shirt as well. Make sure you uh, get yourself a shirt. It's just a way to support my ministry. Um, you know, obviously subscribe, like, share everything you see on, on the YouTube channel. And also, the lastly, the last sponsor is Adipose, uh, Talo. And uh, make sure that you check out the website. Go to adipose.com. I don't have a coupon code for you uh, quite yet, but just make sure to get some Talo. And um, very shortly, I have another product that I'm going to be coming out with shortly. But um, this is a little bit of a teaser, so I won't go into that yet. You know, at, at a certain point, not to get too deep on the thing, or it's a, it's, at a certain point, science became a cult. And, uh, you know, people like to look at religion like it's the only cult. But there's a lot of things that you're not supposed to question in science. And there's a lot of things that you're supposed to take into account and just accept blindly as uh with faith and without hypothesis and without testing and without being able to you know follow things with a method so there's that and then also you know talking about the work when it comes to you know your the experience of with your wife in the hospital is you know i think that there's this thing where we lean into where it's like oh man hard work and the depending on how you play the game you know i really think that the the joy is the hard work and really creating the game in a, in such a way that like the hard work is the most valuable thing to you not only in reward but also in effort yeah wow that's deep yeah it, it, it's funny it's that if you don't struggle you don't become any better so you, you need the hard work to really solidify who you are um it's no different than just getting something like fl a flash in the pan, right? People that win the lottery, those are the people that end up uh, on welfare or something. Why? It's because they didn't really grow and get it the hard way. By doing that, you appreciate it and you understand the value of money. Whereas if you get it flash in the pan, no different than when somebody, you know, blows up overnight, sells their soul and becomes a millionaire or famous overnight, they can't handle it. Well, because they didn't grow into that role. They got, they got, that got mass produced, manufactured nonsense. And now they can't go outside without being noticed and, and they don't know how to deal with it. Yeah. Because you, you never, you never went, went from local fame, state fame, you know, regional fame, national, like you didn't do the proper growth. Um, you know, even with the proper growth channels, I think that the biggest trap that people get caught into is the pleasures of the flesh. It's a situation where when you have all of the access to resources and you have all the opportunity, a lot of times people are coming from environments or situations where they haven't had that exposure and they haven't had the ability to find out that these things don't fulfill the spirit in the end. Right. Whether it's, you know, and the, these are some of the main lessons I learned the past two years in Miami is, you know, it doesn't matter how many women, it doesn't matter how how great the women are. It doesn't matter how much money is coming in. It doesn't matter how many uh, substances that may find their their way into your body. It's a situation where if if you're moving without God, you're, you're a fish without water. And it's it's like a Chinese knot, like a like a hand knot, you finger know, those, yeah, like the finger trap where you think that um, you getting more of the thing will loosen in the knot, but you actually have to like, when it comes to suffering, is you actually have to lean into suffering and suffer more to be able to get more freedom versus trying to pull away from suffering mm. with pleasure. Yeah. And that's really like the war of like yeah. the, the flesh and the spirit. So when you, things happen like you win the lottery or you have access to all of these things, whether it be you, you come into a spirit or you're not into a spirit, but you come into a, an evolution where you're more attractive physically and now you have access to women or it's a situation where you come into uh, some kind of career success and now you have the ability to do X, Y, and Z. It's, it's something to be mindful of wherever you're at in your journey is the war between the spirit and the flesh and ultimately you will find out uh, that the flesh doesn't fulfill.
you, you could have a hundred women and it's it's not going to be as valuable as having that one woman who you work through everything with and you go to the mountaintop with so yeah amen amen no it's uh that's a that, that's a that's a mic drop you know that's a that, that's a powerful one i think that um every day that's our that's our that's our battle is is whoever you are when you wake up it's it's are you going to be are you going to be feeding your flesh or are you going to be feeding your spirit and it's like man i don't care who you are if you're the most holiest person listen it's going to it can manifest through your diet you could be somebody that overindulges with food you could be somebody that's addicted to to any kind of substance you could be somebody that is too much into watching uh scary stuff like you like uh scary movies or you get thrills out of that kind of stuff it could be like anything that you're like over overindulging in into your physical body and uh are you doing something that's actually holy are you listening to things that are holy and that are uplifting your spirit or you're listening or you listening to things that's low vibrational so it could even be the music you're listening to you know it's like how are you how are you going to be holy and you're going to your car and you're listening to something that's like oh f this f that you know these people suck you know bitches whatever it's like come on like what now you're going to pull up and be like blessing your fellow brother and like <laughs> you know being super sweet to the waitress no you're going to come through like a like a douchebag because you're listening to douchebag music and you're doing douchebag things and you drew drove like a douchebag and <laughs> right yeah i think the biggest thing too is what's really interesting when you think about words and um curses right like it's even baked into the word cursing right and Amen. you know whatever word that you're using in those and even you know i've i've had like some really specific relationships where we would say curses at each other and it was a term of endearment amen like even the last word even the last word that you used is like right. that was Should one even of say it I mean yeah, that that I know part, what you're saying. but like that used that used to be a term of endearment where right. we would both say that to each other and it would be like this inside thing that we had inside joke. Yeah, yeah, but it's a situation where those words and oftentimes the meaning behind it every time implies there being some kind of disagreement that you're having with the current moment, and if it, it's like this misalignment or this lack of acceptance, right? Like if if you drop an f bomb, it's um. It's a situation where the the general way that that word is used is um, like, oh man, something bad, right? Like something out of alignment with what you want. It's yeah. Yeah. You know what's funny? So like, this is everything he's talking. Like we've talked a lot on a lot of topics, and, and I love it because there's there's been like no clear cut structure, but I love how this is this is the way conversations flow. The topics that we've hit on are a lot of the topics that kind of like interest me as I started waking up in Christ and just in things in general. The etymology of words and how they really have us in in a in a stronghold with the words that we're using, right? The spelling, it spells. I mean, it goes on and on with the words. Yes. Words are swords. Swords. You put an S in the beginning of words. Swords. Words. Uh, there's a lot of of I, I say gravy, meaning like good information there's a lot of gravy in this kind of um a uh, way of thinking Be especially it's empowering too if you know two languages and i'm not saying i'm the best spanish speaker he doesn't but, speak spanish <laughs> right <laughs> no, but no no but but you know and a lot of the times by knowing some of the spanish or uh, the latin you'll notice how there's there's dual meanings behind words and um that really woke me up about how i was inadvertently cursing myself constantly and i it was completely unbeknownst to me and that was something i really because i was like hey as i became closer in christ oh wow does that mean i need to be a goody two-shoes and not curse it doesn't mean that god is everything if you god could be the most awesome you know cool guy ever but it's not about being cool he can be cool and hilarious and funny but it's not about that. It's about not cursing yourself. And I think that that's what God reveals to us as when you come close to God. It's like you watch your tongue because you could actually be harming yourself and your vibration and your brother in a spiritual realm unbeknownst to you. So, yeah, they ha they have us in, in, in a crazy uh in, in a crazy game with with that, the etymology of words. I was trying to think of a. Uh, a really powerful example, but I got you on that one. Go for it. 
So the, the biggest one that I've gotten away from is mourning, right? Mourning being a situation where, you know, somebody's, um, what is the, what is the correct terms here? When somebody, when somebody has died, you're in mourning you're for mourning. that person, yeah, right. right? But every, every day you wake up, people say good, good morning, morning, like good de like, you know, good state of somebody being dead. And it's a situation where it, it doesn't accurately, especially even taking the word away from right taking the word away from it or excuse me the meaning behind the word and just how it feels morning mm. right it doesn't accurately even if you say good morning it doesn't accurately describe the feeling and it's the, like a solemnness to it. There, it, it it feels that way and um it doesn't accurately describe the the feeling that should be associated in my opinion and or like happy like correct or it being like this great opportunity, right? Mm. Because every day that you're still here is a great opportunity to take your life mm. more towards the spirit, to do more of God's will, to improve on what um, is in your past and to learn from what's in your past. So it's more of a grand rising. Grand rising. So I say, you know, I've, I've totally gotten away from the good morning. And it, it there's even, you know, in church or wherever I, I may go, people say that. And then when you don't say it back, there's kind of this dis-ease in the energy where I'm, I'm saying grand rising and they're like, you know, there's like this take back, but it's, it feels more accurate to how I feel that the fact that God has given me another day to exist. Yeah. It, it's, I'm so glad you use that example and I could tell it's Holy Spirit led and I'll tell you why. So there's another podcast that I was listening to and um, it's funny. So they make content about things I like and they, they, about like Nephilim, fallen angels and stuff, things that I'm, I'm into. And I've made a, some content on it. So I started watching uh, this guy doing a live stream. They're called the Nephilim Death Squad, right? Interesting name, <laughs> right? That's a podcast. And, and I seen them on the Tim Foa Hat podcast. And Sam Tripoli, I know we chatted. You better hop on. But anyways, uh, I, I was listening to their stream. And then in the beginning, he goes, good morning. Good. And so he, he's obviously aware of the etymology thing because him and all of his like audience are making a joke overly emphasizing the morning part but so i was listening to the stream he probably said that like a, like a, and i'm not trying to be mean but goofy like because he would admit is goofy good morning but and then and then i wrote in the chat why are you trying to if you're aware of this why are you trying to mindfully lower the vibration of your audience mm, you know what i mean like, like sure like you're aware of it yeah. but why don't but okay now now, now, now do the jujitsu do the uh the judo flip it on its head don't just like stay stuck in that state and like mock it and laugh it's like are we elevated or are we like backsliding mentally and like yeah. He's messing up the signal on my tinfoil hat for sure. Right? Why would, do that? <laughs> Why would you do that? So, like, I mean, listen, peace and love, and I say this all in positivity. But, yeah, like, okay, if you're aware that morning's not good, well, then switch it up, dog. What's up? You know what I mean? Yep. And, and get called out, I guess, on this podcast. Get, <laughs> get called out. Yo, we coming out for you. Bra, bra, bra. You know what I started realizing about energy and polarization, right? Like positive and negative, right? That's what gives energy. And I started realizing that's why these people do everything, right? Like Donald Trump. That's why he puts everybody in this, in this, in that, in that hate love cycle. Because what's that doing? The positive and negative, like a battery. More energy, you know? That's what he's doing. Yeah, man. That's some alchemy, huh? I mean, light universe, so it's energy, and if you get people to respond, that's more energy. More energy comes your way. It's, um, yeah. Yeah, I love it, bro. But uh, listen, I want to know more about your music, man. So, th and this is talking from somebody. I like him as a person. He probably has fans, but I, I, I'm, I'm more interested as a soul. But now I want to, I want to, want you to wear your artist hat and talk to me about, yeah, exactly, the artist uh, fedora. But, <laughs> but anyways, Not a fedora. That's hilarious. <laughs> that's so yeah, I'm just. But yeah, man, uh, t talk to me, bro. Like, I mean, uh, how'd you get started? Like doing like, I don't know, boat parties, EDM, all this kind of stuff. Like. I don't know, just take me through some of this of like the evolution of who you became or who you were or who you are maybe. Um, sure. Yeah. Yeah, the EDM part hurt, but I guess it is technically electronic dance music, but just knowing the 
um, thing. For for me, it's more of uh, house music and very specifically my favorite genre is Afro house. And um, how what got me into it was, you know, it was a situation where I was throwing parties before I moved to Miami and North Carolina and the music being played there just wasn't anything that was like, oh my goodness, like I can't wait to hear this artist. Like it was never that. And um, so I got into DJing and we had had equipment. We were throwing parties for people. So I started DJing there and then it wasn't anything serious or anything like that. And I took a break from it and um, was, wasn't a priority in any way, shape or form. My, uh, uh, my, my whole life does a major shift. I end up moving to Miami. Still DJing is not a priority. And then what was that shift if, 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 if unless you mindfully went over that if, i guess I, I could talk about it is um my dad passes sorry to hear that all good uh, everything happens on divine time the i guess i should just say i appreciate that appreciate yeah. that yeah, yeah that'd be the <coughs> listen i mean uh maybe that's the reason why god wanted me to elaborate on that you know i think other people can maybe um you know learn learn through your lived experience and you know, we all are fellow humans, brothers in Christ and people, and we all go through similar stuff. So, you know, by by you opening up your wounds and being vulnerable, you could really, you know, help other people. So That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. So dad passes. My business with throwing parties in North Carolina is not a good situation for me anymore. And, um, and I had a, a girl that I was dating at the time who lived in Miami. And I was like, oh, this, 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 this could be a great situation. So I moved down to Miami and very, very quickly found out that uh, I wanted to keep Miami, but I wanted to get rid of the girl. And I met this amazing group of people and uh, a couple of them I'm still like incredibly close with now. And they were pulling me into the music, were pulling me into the partying. And it was, uh, we threw a party at one, one of my friends friends places and uh his name is elton um and i was like oh what are we what are we gonna do for music like what's the game plan and they're like oh we don't really have a game plan we're just gonna play something on the speaker and i was like well i got dj equipment and it was like amazing so i think it was only like i wouldn't even be surprised if it was more than a day to prepare but i i brought all the stuff that i had and played music for everybody and everybody loved it and i was like this felt amazing and um I, I still don't, uh, won't forget the feeling of us doing this pre-party at a friend's place and then being a situation where we went into another party and how great I felt having DJed before we went into that party and the compliments I got and, you know, how it made me feel. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to start investing energy into this. And then money started coming in and different opportunities started coming in. And then I ended up pushing towards what I was doing in North Carolina, which is building community so so you, so you look at it as a music slash community building thing yep. for the most part yep so so with that being said like um what's wh- are you still on that path with the uh like go like performing on boats or you what's what's the next evolution on the community and music e- or yeah. is that coming yeah that's still that's still in process i still have a lot of people that i love and care about and that when we come together, there's a lot of cohesion, but it's a situation where I, you know, as much, I, I, the conversation that God had with me is that I will be held liable for bringing people into darkness with the talents and the things that I have. So it's a situation where I've been working out, okay, how do I flip it? And it'd be a situation where I add and bring people into light and not have people partying till like five in the morning and even later and that kind of thing or ending up on situations where I'm getting paid really well on boats, but I don't like the people that I'm with and it's not good energy and there's maybe not some, we, we won't even say maybe, there's just not very godly things happening on the boats. It's funny you said that, man, because I, 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 this must be a Holy Spirit led, I mean, it has to be, you know, because I mean, look, this is the podcast, but um, yeah, you're, you're saying things that really resonate. Yesterday, I had a conversation with somebody, actually Caleb, who is sick. Uh, I was talking with him on the phone, and uh, 
we were talking about stuff and and I was like, man, like uh, I feel like in a different path, I would be a pastor because because he was a pastor kid. His dad's a pastor, and um, he was like, dude, could have been, you could still be one. Yep. And then I right away I told him I was like, listen, man, to me I'm such a nerd. Like meeting like I'm a, I'm such a dork with whatever I take so seriously. Like I'd be cursing myself. Everything I do, I take it very seriously, whatever it is. It could be anything. Uh, my, my typography, I make sure the letters, the, the space between letters is perfect. Everything. I'm just like obsessed. So with imagine something for God, leading people towards God. Mm -hmm. Like I would take that so, with so, so much sincerity and reverence. And I wouldn't want to be sent to hell, bro. I, I wouldn't want to be sent to hell for not preaching the right gospel for not saying the right thing you know because i really feel like that's something you really have to take freaking seriously like i want to be these pastors willy-nilly look at my cool shoes look how you know look at all this my cool haircut all this stuff like you know like i i would be like legit and then as a result of that man i would be afraid of 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 not giving the right message bro you mm -hmm. know what i mean and and obviously i have my my ministry with my podcast but i think people could could see that i'm a i'm a sinner like you know i i'm not i'm not a pastor right i think it's obvious but i'm trying to work on preach the god uh, god's message but uh yeah like the, the, i just feel like having that title like you really you really got to come correct you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. if you're calling yourself that you know what i'm saying you know, what's interesting what comes to mind is, you know, we think of preaching in the sense of like leading a congregation inside a church, but we're always preaching what we believe and it. It's the end. The end of what we believe is coming out of our mouth all the time. Right. So it's like, what are what are you using your verbal energy for? And it's preaching things that you believe in, whether it's you believe in using Miami nightlife, for example, you believe in chasing women or you believe in, um, you know, substances and that being a primary focus or, you know, the disposable nature of things, you're preaching that to the next person. Yeah. And in the same way where you believe in something else, you're going to naturally be preaching that or pushing people in that direction. So I don't think it's a situation where, you know, if you're called to preach and you're called to lead a congregation inside the church space, and that's something for sure that time will reveal itself and you'll know and the spirit will speak to you. But it's you're doing that now. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, that, that's good. Yeah. Thanks for that. That reminder. Yeah. It doesn't need to be. Um, and if anything, I think Jesus was more about podcasts. The, 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 not no, podcasts okay, per okay. se. G <laughs> hey, Jesus is about podcast guys. All right. No. He, he wasn't about the stale aspect of church. You know, he, he was, I think that Jesus's church was more like his intention was relationship. Yeah. You know, this, or, or, you know, talking with like, uh, like when, when I met, when I met you at the farmer's market, Yep. like that's, that could be church, you know, it, it very well could be. There's a lot of times where if, uh, if anybody's had this experience is, you will be somewhere you'll be doing something and all of a sudden you'll be called and next thing you, or being be used and next thing you know you're having a conversation about somebody's entire life or somebody's venting to you or you find out somebody you know is on the edge and you ended up being the person that we're safe enough to talk to or you know however it may be but you end up finding out that the situation was you were merely just a vessel that got to inhabit a space for the spirit you know that's beautiful man it's you're like allowing yourself to be the conduit that god needs i've always thought about that right like you know when you hear those stories of like somebody gets like you know somebody's on the last their last like line in life right like whatever it is like are we talking about substances or? no like the, like the rent oh, is due okay. they're like they're <laughs> I can't no, resist the no, jokes. no you're good but like let's say the rent is due they're like it's like crazy and then all of a sudden they get a knock on their door and like somebody hands them like, oh, I don't know what happened. God told me to give you 500 bucks or like, you know, there's these like stories sometimes. I answer my door more often. Right. I'm doing something wrong. No, but, but, I, but I feel like there's these like stories that occur and you're like, dude, like where does this come from? And then you realize like the more you move in the spirit, you're like, oh, that person was being a vessel. That person was open to God so much at that moment that they got that inkling from God and they acted upon it. Yep. They go, damn, you know what? 
Because I get that inkling sometimes. Not like that. But maybe I, I'm, I'm coming down the street and I see the homeless dude and I got a sandwich in my car. Like, ah, I was planning on eating that today for lunch, but whatever, bro. I have a, I have a fridge full of food. You know, okay, I'm not going to eat for six hours. Big deal. Here you go. You know what I mean? But like, that's the Holy Spirit say, hey, Mike, give it to him. You know what I mean? Right. So I don't know. I don't know what got me into that. But yeah, it's just funny how you could be you could be that conduit. You could be that vessel, you know, so um, You, you could be the light in the darkness at any time and you could illuminate somebody's whole world for however long. A lot of times things stick with people, especially when they're at their lowest and you offer that light. Or you ended up being a vessel for the light that they needed in that moment. Or maybe somebody in the car behind me was like, huh, look at this homeless guy, maybe in a negative light. And then they see me giving him food. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, damn, you know, po- change of point of view. Yeah. And now, like, besides affecting his life, I f- affected Awalita behind me or whoever it is, you know. Shout out to the Abuelita. So shout out Abuelita who is judging me and then, you know, got a change of heart. Yeah. I mean, it activates, whenever people see other people doing things, it activates their mirror neurons. And that's why I was, you know, back to the preaching thing where whatever you're doing, not only verbally, but whatever you're physically doing, you're essentially preaching, you're, you're pulling people towards you because if it, it activates a moment of self-reflection where somebody was saying, or they had this dialogue in their head about looking down on somebody or whatever it may be, and they see somebody showing that person love, it, it triggers something in them. So... Yeah. Want to know what it is, man? I just became really hyper aware. Ever since my mom died, I became really hyper aware of death and the afterlife. Oh, how's it going to be when I die? Where's she at right now? And, and that not only has that stayed with me, but even I feel like even when I was younger, I was always learning and, and like yearning, yearning for that. And um, now it's like every day, I don't want to say every day, but almost every day, it's like, I think if I were to die today, how would that be? How would that final judgment be? Mm. You know, so it's almost a, it's like I, I'm the forefront of my mind is death in a lot of ways. So then it's like, if I'm going to be judged, let me try to do good today. Let me do good. Let me do good. Let me not mess this up. Let me not mess this up. And then it's like, I just become a different person. I, I've like completely transformed. I was so... And listen, I still fight ego and pride. I I fight it hardcore. But I was such a self-absorbed, narcissistic person. And it's like to see how I'm able to do things for other people and like not even expect things in return. It's like, bro, I've done like a 180. You know what I mean? But it's not because of me. It's all through the power of God. You know? So, yeah, just sharing that. (laughs) I don't know why I felt like sharing that one. I'm in such a stage now where it's like anything good I do, I want to give the glory to God and let anything that I'm doing out of the flesh. I'm like, yo, that's me. That's that, me. That, 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 oh, that one's me. That, dude, one's, I, <laughs> that, that one's me. Anything bro, good that you see coming from dog, me. I was literally thinking shout about that out, on the way Joe, here. Dude. Anytime I mess up, it's me. But any good that comes my way, it's it's all him. Yeah, credit, It's wild, bro. Credit every time. Bro, that, I that's look how at, I'm feeling. I look at my daughter and I'm not even saying that as a humble brag. I look at my daughter. I look at my son. They're so perfect. It's unbelievable. And I'm like, dude, yeah, it's my DNA, whatever. But none of that's me, bro. That was all God. The the formulation, the the nose from here, the mouth from there. Like, you know, the the way that he put it all together, bro, it's it's magnificent, bro. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. it's unbelievable. The great designer, you know what I mean? Uh, I mean, you're, you're still putting in that golf game in the bedroom. So. Yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah, bro, you know. <laughs> Yeah, man. No, that's, you know, and he blesses us with that, bro. Even to conceive is, is, is a fun thing, you know, yep. people abuse that fun, but you know, yeah. I used to, I used to abuse that, you know, uh, Lord knows, uh, especially doing the DJ thing in Miami. I was, uh, yeah, I was fornicating out here. Well, how about, how about, how about that next one, bro? How about the corn with the, put a P P uh, yeah, instead the, the of the corn. C. Dude, you know, what's cool is I, I, there, there was a little loophole I fell into for a little bit, but the, I've, I've been away from corn now for over two years. Amen. Something like that. Yeah, man. So that has been like, that'll change the game for you. The semen retention and all that. Oh, You're into goodness. all that. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. now, now it's like, you know, before it was still a situation where like I wouldn't be doing those things, but you would have. Your, your energy goes up, right? It's like a supply and demand thing. Unbelievable. And then people can sense that. 
and the energy becomes more valuable. So it'd be a situation where I would go a period and I, I, I didn't know what was going on, but I, there was this greater pull, right? And the, this greater sense of attraction that went on. So now that it's a situation where you know, I'm, I'm totally done with the fornicating, Lord knows I still struggle with lust, um, but I've, I've stayed away from it and I want to stay away from it till marriage. So it's a situation where it's like once you realize that you don't have to release and you get out of this cycle, it's like finding out that like if you don't quench your thirst with water, like you die, right? But it's a situation where a lot of these other cycles that are going on, if you can abstain from them for long enough, you realize that you can totally change the game by not having to engage in the cycle at all. Like you have the thought that comes up of water or lust or corn or that kind of thing. And you're like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to activate that. So it's been incredibly powerful in my life. No, that's, that's beautiful. It's, it's something that a lot of men struggle with. And I feel like what you're, yeah, a (laughs) hundred percent, but, but, but I would say that it's so easy to fight it when you are fighting it and what i mean by that and that sounds like doesn't make sense but hear me out okay when, when you're when you are submitting meaning like okay fine let me just look at this picture okay fine da, da, da. Like, like once you give in a little bit man that's when it's like quicksand it's okay. so hard it's so hard so it's like it's almost like as soon as you start getting that like notion of like oh you know let me look at this let me uh da, 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 da. That's when you have to stop and say, absolutely not. Because your, your mind's not even going to trick you to just start masturbating or whatever it is. Your mind will trick you to just say, hey, just look at this yeah. really quick. Whatever yeah, it might oh, be. it's an inch at a time. Oh, it's yeah. A, it's an inch oh, at, man. If, if you give the devil uh, an oh, inch, you, he will find a way in. And uh, that's, that's, a, that's all it is, bro. Dude, it's, it's an inch at a time. And with that, it's, a, it, it's such a dangerous game to play. And I don't know if you've ever seen the emotional chart like the emotional energy chart for our different emotions and how lust is the lowest vibration and, uh, or one of the lowest vibration frequencies. And if you indulge in that, it's a situation where now you're no longer in a vibrational frequency match of gratitude. You're no longer in a, yeah, it's like lacking. It's it's a state of lack. Exactly. mm -hmm. So it becomes this dangerous loop where as soon as you start, as soon as you allow that inch, it ends up uh, putting you in a different energetic state and that different energetic state will will get you out of places like happiness and and peace and all these other things so it's it's a very slippery slope so no no just power man no that's it's it's so it's so deep it's so real um yeah and it's funny how there's like colors associated with that right kind of like the chakras and all that kind of stuff and and what i find is interesting about that is Red's like low vibration, right? Then it goes up the color chart. But what I know past purple, it goes into like another red, right? Does it? Yeah. Okay. So it's like, so it's like red is like, could be like, you know, the low vibrational, but then there's like a high red where it's past. It's like, it's like the most divine red. It kind of reminds me of like music, how it's, you know, you have the 12 notes of the scale and then it repeats back to C. Yeah. So it's like, you know, C is a very specific color. And it's like C3 is a very specific color, but C4 is, you know, the same color at a higher register. So it's like, and that has a different feeling and a different effect than the C3. So, you know, I mean, if energy is a color, uh, you know, it's all vibration. So it's all the same. You're just kind of seeing a manifestation in a different way. But uh, yeah, it, it's funny how when you become close, close to Christ, you're, you're, I don't know, I feel like God opens up your mind and, gives you the divine intellect to, to to understand and know these things and you know a lot of the times i'll tell someone something and it's like yo where'd you get that from and granted i listen to podcasts and all kinds of stuff but sometimes i just get like i don't know it's just like a divine download it's like god would just as i'm talking he's just giving it to me you know it's like past my even understanding you know mm-hmm. and it's not because of me it's just because i made myself a conduit you know i i allow myself to hum- humble myself and let myself go down and let God be more. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. The spiritual rights thing, like you, you really have to open the door for God and invite him in and, uh, you know, keep that door open because it's a situation where at least in my experience, God is not trying to be in a house that doesn't want him in it. So, 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 so can you give a testimony on, on how you let him in 
your house? I mean the your the temple. I mean even the you know I, I don't like uh, talking about good things I I do it it feels like very off to me that's that was where the hesitancy with the previous story that I told you about was but I think that or the reason that I do share it is because unknowingly when I when all of that started when the when I was like God use me however you want to use me that was me opening the door and I didn't even understand that I was opening the door at the time. But I believe that in the spiritual realm, that's what I was doing, was I was opening up myself to uh, whatever suffering that would come that would be allowing God to use me as a vessel. Mm. So, yeah, because there, there's, a, there's a lot of, you know, people think that like following Christ and getting closer to God is like just this one sided, like it's all light, like it's all a good time, like it's all. Right. Uh, feel good and and the reality is it's not like that at all so it's there's more suffering involved there's more denying the flesh so less pleasure in a lot of the different regards and then on top of that you've got the double team from the enemy where if if you're not if you don't have the gift of discernment or you don't have enough discernment to know the spiritual realm yet there are other forces that God exists and if God exists then uh, a different energy or excuse me then like in, in the same light and dark there are there is a dark force we call him satan the devil they're demons there's all these different things so and and they are not too thrilled when you're doing god's work for the kingdom so not only do you have the denying the flesh and the less pleasure that you experience from like not doing whatever it was that was bringing you a lot of pleasure but you also have the double team from the enemy that doesn't feel good and then you also have to be willing to Christ teaches us to deny ourselves and to be willing to pick up our cross every day and suffer and keep that door open for God, which is like one of the hardest things is, you know, how do you handle pain and how do you handle pain once you get to that threshold where it feels like you can't take pain anymore? Do you close that door on God and then do you go back to what's comfortable? Do you go back to whatever it may be that's out of alignment with God, but it satisfies the flesh? Yes, you do, unless you keep, you keep, the, the perspective that the um, the kingdom of heaven is upon us, right? You, any day you could die. You know, any day, you know, if, if you're hyper aware that everything is recorded and you're ready, you, you, you're you aware that you're going to have to answer for all the things that you did, all the thoughts you had, all the things that, that you messed up on or whatever. Man, how embarrassing, how revealing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, man, you, you tried that old lady in traffic? What a dick, bro. She was like... 100 years old you know whatever it is imagine all those feelings that you feel she should have gotten her license taken away a long time <laughs> she, ago she should have been driving that slow yeah. no but f imagine bro yeah no I, I i i'm actually and this is a guy that doesn't sin that much compared to killers and stuff but i still have a lot of sins hey so, which which sin is greater than the other right sin? exactly so i'm gonna go man when i'm being judged man man i just hope that god gives me mercy i'll tell you that right now so i'm on that path of trying to fix those wrongs and yeah man i i, I want to you know i want to be god's homeboy you know what i'm saying so that's uh and, and the that's bible the path and the bible teaches us that the great or the the judgment that we passed on uh that we pass on others is the same judgment that will be used on us so if you want god to show you mercy then it's very important for us to extend out mercy so based yeah it is uh based and, and this is something, too, that I keep running into with uh, Christians and with all kinds of different people of all different religions and walks of life and thought processes is like we're not supposed to judge. But again, they're entirely wrong. It We're supposed to use righteous judgment. And the Bible says this as well as we're supposed to judge out of a place of love and we're supposed to be able to to discern right from wrong and good from bad and using the word and using the Bible for that is uh is huge and there was another part to this that i was gonna say no using righteous judgment that it's not righteous just judgment. about hey don't judge me it's like okay if you're doing something that's messed up i'm not just gonna let you steamroll society it's like I'm, and, and me being soft about it no i'm right. gonna tell you what's up like right. and i'm right? still gonna love you after like right. even if you decide that you want to yeah you know I've, I've got friends that are still i mean yeah from all different sides of the spectrum doing yeah. all kinds of different things and you know i love i love i love them all i'm gonna yeah. sp i'm gonna speak my piece and if you want to keep doing your thing like i i came from a place of love I, I pointed out the thing and i would want them to do the same for me and um yeah 
Yeah, man. It seems like you're so evolved, bro. Uh, I, I might like, like, I, I want to ask you, like, how did this uh, spiritual epiphany come upon you? You know, like, obviously, you know, you, you came close to God. You did your thing. Were you watching things on YouTube? Were you going to church? Like, were you just remembering things that you learned when you were a child? Did you start just reading the? I mean, what 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 was that that nudge? You know. So I mean, obviously, you had that experience of of you know these things of of you doing good for your fellow man, like the the testimony you gave. But was there something else that brought you to where you're at now? Yeah, a lot of suffering. And um, and then partly luck as well in the situation where. So one of the big things is I, I, I fractured my neck in a couple of different places when I was young and they didn't know about it. But anyways, I started getting migraines from it. And I learned early on then that the different if I was holding on to anything like any kind of resentment or any kind of ill energy or bad energies. Uh, I don't want to condense it down to bad energy. I wouldn't, I don't want to be as reductionist. Like if I was angry at somebody or something, I would, it would make my whole brain hurt worse when I was having the migraines because of the next stuff. So I learned early on that letting go and not holding on to resentment and things like that was the way in this very intimate kind of sense. And then also, you know, some very early questions that I asked started to like and, and different things that happened to me really started to form my thought process in the sense that like, you know, I looked around and uh, at a pretty young age and I was like, why is nobody around me happy? Like I, I kind of could sense that at like, I was like six or seven. I was like, bro, everybody kind of feels like they're low key, like <laughs> not feeling good. Like mm. you. And, um, and then the other question that happened pretty early on in life as well in my adolescent years was, uh, or teenage years was, I'll give it a second. Yeah. Something that happened on that pretty early on in my uh, teenage years was the question of, you know, I had somebody around me who would, who said they loved me, but it was a situation where they were doing things that hurt me. So the question was, how could somebody who loved you do things to hurt you? And that, while while those two questions, like why is nobody happy and how could somebody you love do something that hurts you, seem like oh just questions they they prove to be incredibly you know you have to really figure out life to answer those two questions and figure out psychology f philosophy neuroscience like all these different things that i ended up diving into uh over extended periods of time to like really get the answers to them and i would say within like the last you know year or two years that really those puzzle pieces started to click after 10 15 20 years but with with God and Christ right. exactly yeah tied into it yep so uh, all of this comes back to a, one of my uh, philosophies or you know however you want to look at that or one of my um, my truths or I, I don't even think associating with myself is the way to do it but something that I've come to understand is that God's programming is incredibly consistent so philosophy psychology neuroscience Christ all those things all of those different realms, they have the same math that's functioning within them and the same amount of consistency in the sense that they add up every single time if you understand them. Mm. And, that's, yeah. and that's my thing with Christ is Christ did not miss a single time. Find a single syllable out of place, a single thing that doesn't add up every single time, no matter which way you test it, in the sense of not extending cycles of suffering, unnecessary cycles of suffering, you will... That's the thing with all of our other prophets and all of the other different leaders and our, ourselves. We we could we could give out cool stuff or give out uh, universal level truth. And uh, you know even Moses and all of these other people that were used in the Bible, they're still dirty sinners. We're still dirty sinners. Jesus did not miss a single time, and that's yeah. something that mean you will never be able to say. No. Yeah. And none of our prophets can say no nobody else's prophets yeah, can say that yeah i mean look at you know noah uh, was a drunk i mean you go on and on solomon backslid had all these wives all and the, all the fornication wives, all the fornication all the pleasure and he, and lost he backslid on on uh demonology and stuff too right wasn't he like doing stuff with spirits or whatnot i wouldn't be surprised but i'm not 100 percent sure on that one but and and he faced god's wrath on those things eventually 
and even the different prophets outside of uh, the religion or outside of Christianity is, you know, when you look at uh, Buddhism, the mm. Buddha, not only did he say, don't worship me, which is a dangerous one that people get involved in, uh, but it's also a situation where he got to experience all of the pleasure all of the time until he realized that it wasn't it. He was a prince who like licked his fingers and pointed at women and it was just, he just got whatever he wanted. So, and then you have other prophets, uh, like in, uh, Islam where he Muhammad. killed, Muhammad killed thousands of people right. under his orders. Yeah. It's like, find, find that, find, yeah. and that's inconsistent. God doesn't like the, the creation versus the destruction thing. And like our God is a God of creation. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, to, to, to be destroying creations. It's like, you know, you could do all these good things, but the ultimate side of it is there is this inconsistency. There is this dirty sinner aspect of all of us, except for Jesus. Except for Jesus. Yeah. And that another thing that interesting is that Jesus is accepted in all these other religions. But except that in Christianity, Jesus says, I am the only way. I, I am the, the way, follow, the truth, and the, the light. Life. And nobody gets, gets to the, the Father but through me. The, the, and, but through and, either, me. And, and this is something I, I've had to talk with with other people. Is like, either you think Jesus is a liar when he said that, which, okay, like, I'm, I'm with you, fair enough. Yeah. And like, that could be the contention point. Or that is as consistent as the rest of his math. And, you know, I think about it, and it's like, uh, me getting to get to go into heaven is no matter how many good things I've done, no matter what light I've created in the darkness, I imagine heaven is perfect. I imagine it as God's yeah. will being done all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah look at me, you know, tattoos and stuff. Wait, wait, you, you think God Dirtied wants up the temple? That's yeah, gross. exactly, bro. Uh, trust oh, me. So no, 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 it, but it, isn't that funny though? Like, you know, who am I? What you think? You think you're going to go to heaven, bro? Look at you, bro. You, you look like a freaking, uh, Street thug, you yeah. know what I mean? I mean, listen, and I'm talking about I'm talking about the way God probably looks at us, that pure, holy being that would never sin. You feel me? Like, granted, yes, I'm judging myself, but I'm just saying, like, I'm obviously not judging other tattooed people because that'd be the biggest hypocrite. But it's funny to me, like, that's the way that God is looking at everything, you know? So it's like, and having that awareness, you know, that godly awareness, that bird's eye view, where I could say that in that way. Because I'm aware, because I could be a conduit. I understand the way he feels. That's why it's like, bro, I cover them up, you know? And, like, and I'm not saying that, that, oh, you have to cover them up. I do it because it's the way I feel about it, because that's the way God tells me, you know? Like, listen, if God tells me to make music, so be it. If he tells... If God tells this guy to start a homeless ministry, okay, like we, yeah, we, we the only time I'm gonna do it. <laughs> we all, he's gotta we, make that call. But we all we only do you know, I, I guess what I'm saying is I don't like it when people make it like, oh, everybody does do it this way. It's like that's the way God says for you. You know, God's gonna tell you something specific for you. Right. You know what I mean? And we right. can't judge each other um based on those motives and who we are and what we're doing, you know, like for example, like when someone said, oh, Christians shouldn't be doing this. Or Christians said, like, I don't like those YouTubers that say those kind of things because they don't really know the, the, the true math of it. God's so awesome. Maybe there are, maybe somebody has to be super tatted with a face tat and all that stuff to reach the, the super thugged out dude in prison or whatever it might be. You know what I mean? And who am I to judge that, that aspect? You know what I mean? Like, so... I mean, God uses us all in different ways, and he's had a history of using people who come from very flawed past and um, have had many issues and all of these different things. And again, it's respect to whatever religion that you're or whoever you're following or whoever you believe is, you know, the ultimate guide and who you should listen to. But it's uh, I, I worry a lot because you, you could clearly see, you know, especially when it comes to the Ten, the ten Commandments, like thou shalt not kill. You know, I mean, if somebody violates that commandment at such a massive scale and they do that over physical riches, it's like it's we're, we're getting into dangerous territory when you hold that at the highest uh, at at the number at the same similar level as God. It's like it, it gets into. Yeah, I no, I mean, I, I the thing I have a problem with and it's not really a problem. I just I, I, I want to be full of grace and full of mercy and when i say that is because listen imagine you're the recipient of information and i'm like oh this is daniel talking 
oh yeah sure your religion oh you've okay yeah you have it figured out great oh yeah i'm sure you know so but let's say you do know the answer as daniel now i'm in a conundrum because i i really i do have the answer right? two plus two is four i want sure. to tell the world however i know that when i say that to some people that might that might make someone feel a certain kind of way. It does every time. So how do you how do you do that with full of love and mercy and grace? And, and I think that that's that's my challenge, right? Because listen, the, the 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 inside of me, I could be the most you know cutthroat, hard tongued, sharp tongued individual. However, now that I'm this new brother in Christ, I don't want to be that way. I have people that I'm friends with that are every form of religion. How do I, how do I connect with them and not offend them, and uh, still give them the true gospel? Yeah. I think that's that's my challenge. You know, um, I don't know if you have an answer for that. You know, no, I think the biggest thing that comes to mind is you know, ex- expressing authentically and doing your best to be not be beyond people reviewing you or to be using judgment against you, even if it may or may not be coming from a place of righteousness, but still reviewing to see if there's consistency in what they're saying. All of my beliefs boil down to, you know, God being incredibly consistent and, you know, going back to Jesus is a situation where when you think of how Jesus interacted in every single situation, there's not a single time where you think, Oh, I, I wouldn't want him to do that to me. You know what right. I mean? And that's where right. with our different prophets, with, even within our own uh, book, there's many of those prophets who if you caught them at the wrong time, like you would not be calling them a prophet. Right. Well, well here, the, and, and I'll do it, everything the opposite that I just said. I'll just take shots at all of them really quick. So, 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 but how about right, this? About so like in Buddhism, that. like Uh-oh. if you're, if you fall off, a, if you're in a boat, and you're in a boat with a Buddhist, he might just let you drown. Why? Because he's going to say, hey, you know, like, this is the way things are. Who am I to interfere? Like, I don't know. Like, this could just be, you know, just letting things unfold the way things are, right? Sure. That, that, that could be a Buddhist philosophy, right? So that's one. So that's I'm not 100% on Buddhist, so I'm just following So So, so that, that's like one. It's kind of just letting things go because you don't really know. You know, you're, you're kind of more of like, like, let things be. Doing, not doing, right? It's called uh, Wei Wu Wei. You're actually doing something by not doing. So if somebody tries you, you say nothing, and maybe that's actually good because they have nothing to fight or respond to. There's wisdom to some of those philosophies, but the crux of it is, in Buddhism, if something is shit hitting the fan, for like you know, for lack of a better term, do nothing. Why? Well, why impose your will? Let 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 God be God. Why why put your ego in it? Okay, so that's Buddhism. So that's my knock on it. With Islam. What you're saying about killing, so like, you know, in, in their books, it's like, you know, if you're an infidel or if you don't believe the right thing, you kill those people. Obviously, in Christianity, no matter what they do, no matter what they believe, it's not about killing people, right? So off the bat, that's wrong, right? So we could just say those two religions are kind of fugazi, right? Yep. Okay. So and, well, Okay, hold up. <laughs> I want to take back the, the right and, and preface it with this statement that the biggest thing when it comes to anything that you're following or... Yeah, I bring it back to an analogy of rat poison is rat poison is 98% edible food, right? It's the 2% that kills the rat. 100%. And in the same way, when it comes to your thoughts or the things that divide us or uh, the separation between God's will and the will of the flesh or, you know, whatever it may be a selfish pursuit or that kind of thing, it is all of these religions have truth. All of them, oh, have, yeah. they have uh, good stuff in them. And Muhammad did a lot of amazing things for uh, a lot of people. And he also brought uh, that side of the world into monotheism, which is amazing. And in the same way that Buddha did a lot of amazing things and um, really taught people, like a lot of the stuff, uh, there's a lot of similarities in things that he teaches in Christianity, or that are that were taught by Christ, that Buddha taught. So, but it's it's just the separation when in, in that two percent that you really need to be careful for, where, you know, it, they different things 
like and one of the things with uh your spiritual thing is if if it doesn't talk about how to cast out demons or doesn't bring in demons into the thing at all mm. that that's the that's part of the two percent that's like mm. it's going to get you and and yeah. yeah yeah no and then i'll go to the last one which is judaism i would say the shot on them is that they you know obviously this is not the um the uh the first five books i forgot the pentateuch pentateuch um they have a word for it but basically not that but like the talmud right basically like they they look at anybody that's non-jewish as like (laughs) like subhuman like obviously like that's like in in a lot of like like, a lot of a lot of people believe that so that that would be my shot on there but that's me being controversial guys I, i i'm fully aware that you have to lead everybody with love and, and everybody's under God's children. But yeah, that would be my knock on, on overall those, uh, <laughs> those religions. But, uh, that's why I have my podcast, bro. I'm not on NBC guys. I'm not on CNN. You know, I say whatever the, you know, yep. I would be very ca- careful with the Talmud to any of my Jewish brothers and sisters. I would really take time to analyze that book and probably step away from it. There are a lot of things there that you wouldn't like that if, if, and if if you were to be treated with those kind of rules and stipulations and you know the things they say about jesus are not very uh heartening they believe he's under a, a huge pile of excrement in yeah. hell yeah 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 and well it's all demonic but 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 the interesting part about that is that i see stuff online and, and we're gonna jump off this topic quick because it's very hot i see stuff online regarding the war in palestine and israel and I've, i have people that are both sides the people that are Jewish that are like, oh my goodness, why does anti-Semitism exist? Or, oh my goodness, all this stuff. They, they have to realize that what people are going up against are things that they're not even realized are being taught in their own religion. So I just say that real, you know, just over the top, you know, not, a, you know, not everything's what it seems and don't believe the media and CNN's so, lying to you and et cetera, right? I mean, is there any way to put a bow in that? Because I feel like it's a real... Uh, t- sensitive subject for some people if I was to say anything on that it's it is it, it's such a complex topic yeah they there's did a, that on purpose the powers it, that be they made it so convoluted it's hard to even talk about it there's so much history that's going on that it's not just what happened last month or last year this dynamic has been going on for a very long time and ultimately anybody who's on the side of destroying God's creations or who is using a rhetoric that paints any buddy uh, that is human as less human or anything of that nature it needs to be that's the same tactic that Hitler used to her our Jewish brothers and sisters and in Nazi Germany, and it's not something we should uh, be for, even if our home team is doing it, even if we're from Israel or even if we're from America, and there's an American president who's trying to sow division with that same rhetoric. Uh, Ultimately, the very, very high majority of us, uh, regardless of if you're following Christ or if you're not following Christ, we want to live our lives and be happy and be valuable and have people that love and care about us and there are people who are very clearly not with god and one of the biggest telltale signs is their attempt to control people and what they think and in a sense that like and and they do it by force it's it's not by conversation it's by long-term manipulation long-term uh you know exercising of force it's um, uh all, all these different things so one of the biggest telltale signs is wherever you're at in your walk with your faith and and that side of things is are you trying to control people or are you trying to control yourself amen yeah no i love it yeah good good way of kind of yeah not going into the specifics yeah no that's good uh i think that's one thing that just to keep in mind yeah lead lead with love right it's at the end of the day can't get psyoped into all the uh narratives and um the narratives are going to be out there bro so you can't get signed off to hating a, a brother or sister just based off of whatever, whatever societal. Yeah. Love you. Love your enemies, my brother. Yeah. Even if they're doing something that that's painful or hurtful, like really 
being a situation where you're leading with love and you know i you know the alchemy that i did with this what's up i got laid off from my job Mm -hmm. everybody that i used to like be with nobody hit me up this is i remember you telling me like like it makes me almost want to cry talking about it but like bro (laughs) i felt so abandoned you know what i'm saying and and it's like what do you do you know what do you do like i had a kid like everybody that was my homie left you know i was like bro it took a long time for me to like get back to where i was you know like even i'm still not even there yet you know i'm still growing and i had so much hate you know so much like bro screw all these people that like bro they they they, they went against my back. They all co- like went behind and conspired. And like, bro, I got laid off. You know, nobody else did. You know what I mean? And it was just, dude, it was it was love your enemies, bro. And then that was like the fuel moving forward. Like, bro, Mike, all that hate that you have, that's that's hurting you. Yep. You know. And then I made a clothing, and then I started making all this positivity from it. And it's just like. That's that spiritual alchemy, you know yeah. what I mean? Of being able just to change that. Like, you know what? Like, you're seeing this ugliness. Oh, you notice something. So what are you going to do about it, bro? Are yeah. you going to be soft and be a little wimp? Or are you going to do something and make something of yourself? You yeah. know what I mean? And yeah, man, it's like love your enemies, bro. Like, that's it, dog. Yeah. You know? Yeah, if you ever find yourself hating anybody or anything, just know that it's you that's out of alignment in that situation. Mm-hmm. And it's... It's a situation where that's the kind of thing that starts wars and then, and then all of a sudden, you know, you'd like, oh, I'd never kill a child. If you have hate in your heart towards anything, that is the seed that grows into hurting children every time. Amen. So. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it, it, listen, when, 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 when you're not operating correctly, it's not you, mm-hmm. right? Demon possession, you know, whatever you want to call it, spirit, right? when you have alcohol right alcohol right and that that word is an arabic word which is like taking it a spirit and then eating spirit fleshing spirit then gin right a gin is like in islam is like a demon and then what do you drink you drink gin right it just it goes on and on there's nothing new under the sun the ecclesiastes but yeah man it's like dude like uh, are you gonna let a negative spirit enter you you know and listen i've been so charged up before so man <laughs> and, and i'm like oh. it's like who is this person that's in me right now you know is that me or is that you know are you under some sort of control yeah. right yeah i've had some times where people were taking really long on my food and i, I felt that same energy <laughs> right no, not some, but yeah man it's a situation where back to god's programming being incredibly consistent is w- the things that we hate or that we despise and that we don't show that compassion for we will notice those we will notice ourselves becoming like that thing and that's because we're harboring that energy so if you hate something you give it 10 years and you'll notice you have became the thing that you hate in that room. wow because you've been because you've been that energy is focusing been, that energy it's been building it's been building it's been building yeah times yeah people are like, Yo, like I a hate, laser I focused hate energy my parents for x y and z and then next thing you know they're doing oh my goodness i'm doing x y and z you know, the same thing that I hated my, my parents for. It's like, ah, oh, okay. There's an understanding. There's an affliction here. There's something to work with. There's there's work to be done to get to the point of compassion and love towards the thing that you dislike. It's like a thought loop, a thought cycle. Yep. And even if it's something horrendous, right, There is there is a point, there is a place to get towards compassion of it. Like people hurting people. It's like these people feel so scared and so lost and so powerless that they're trying to do X, Y, and Z or whatever it may be. Yeah. So. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, bro. Thanks for sharing the the trials and tribulations, though. I think that's super important. Yeah, man. Thank you, bro. It's sometimes, you know, I just feel sh- uh, compelled to share it. And, you know, guys, I, I'll obviously have a full testimony for, for the stuff about my life. But, you know, a lot of the times... Um, I'm not there yet. You know, I, I want to make sure that, that it's time. Uh, and it doesn't seem like it's there yet. But, uh, yeah, th- thanks for for letting me open up. So, bro, um, is there anything else as far as, uh, 
I feel like for you, it's music or also just Christ. Is there anything else just off the top that you want to talk about as far as music or Christ is? Um, so, I mean, music, Christ, the, these are things I'm working on and getting closer with Christ and, you know, really continuing to cut down on all the pleasures of the flesh. And, you know, I find these little areas where, like, my pain tolerance gets to a certain point and then I, like, numb out or I, I do different things. Backslide that, or? Yeah, I would say. Would you call it a backslide? Uh, yeah, well, I would say it's indulging the flesh. It's it's a situation where I'm not leaning into more pain and suffering, which is like not ideal for the creation of value for everybody um, long term. So, but yeah, man, I'm f- those are my two big focuses. Um, really caring about the people around me. I'm working on a new skincare product. I'm I'm launching an organic skincare line within the coming months that uh is taking a lot of work and i've worked with chemists on and it's it's a situation where i believe that that's going to be really valuable for all of us and uh i think that's the majority of it man nice man you got any uh is there is there a a favorite verse or scripture or passage that um first of all is your favorite or second of all kind of um resonates with you in this season of your life not to you know i'm not trying to quiz you by way it doesn't have to be word by word either you're super quizzing me man i I would say i want to say it's ephesians 6 12 or ephesians 8 12 uh we wrestle not against flesh and blood yeah but we wrestle against principalities of darkness we we wrestle against spiritual wickedness in high places we wrestle against uh, d- uh dark powers and dark forces that be and it was taken out of the king james version but also like the governing forces where you know absolute power generally corrupts absolutely yeah right and a lot of these situations they don't have people's best interests at heart yeah they're making sure they take care of themselves yeah and uh you know we have a long way to go and a lot of work to do but you know we we individually can bring uh god's kingdom closer to not only in heaven but on earth so i think it's our our duty to do that in the day-to-day amen i mean listen my name's michael he was asking me what i go by michael i used to go by mike why i'm embracing that that name there's power in names as we were talking about etymology but michael right it's the it's the adversary of the evil one right he's the one that threw satan into into hell right so or, you know, God wanted him out of, out of heaven and, you know, Satan or Michael took care of that. But, um, you know, that's who I'm going up against. That's what this war is. That's what this podcast is. That's what this clothing line is about. Um, that's the journey of helping and healing people. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm very blessed that to have you on the on the podcast. Yeah, obviously, it seems like you're you're you and me are, are in this spiritual war together for the side of good. And listen, we're all in the war regardless. But what I like to tell people is if you don't know you're in the war, that means you're on the wrong team or that means your ass is getting defeated. So, yeah, if you want to start winning, why don't you join the the winning team, which is God's team? And uh, yeah, my brother. Yeah, no, it, it, it's been awesome chopping it up. Is, is there anything else that that, that we may have uh, forgotten about mentioning or anything like that? It is harder on this side <laughs> by a lot. <laughs> It was much easier when I was doing whatever I wanted to do. Um, so between that and then wherever you're at, whoever you're following, whatever religion, whatever may be going on in your life, uh, no matter what harm you've done to other people, uh, I love you. And I, I, I want to see you succeed. I want to see you put out light and, you know, do less of the hurtful things and more of the positive things. Amen. Amen. I agree. Positivity. Love is all. And I think that's the funny thing about the new age movement. They say God is love and God is love. But that the 2% that he was talking about, that's where they psyop you. They say, oh, God is love, same sex marriage. Oh, God is love, this and that. God is love, this and that. It's like, bro, you guys are taking something beautiful and twisting it demonically. Got anything to say on that one or? I mean, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm not going to get uh, too, too deep into that. We all have our, our thoughts on that one. And. There is, uh, you know, there is truth in the two percent thing where it's, you know, people feminize. Um, they, they they say like God is love, and it's like yes, but 
I believe, you know, again, in, in our in our relationship with God and with Christ is we, we call God Father. And a father's love is very different than a mother's love. Uh, a God's love is disciplinary. And, you know, it's a situation where God will uh, allow you to do whatever you want, but there are consequences. Amen. And it's, Amen. V- it's very dangerous to pretend like God's going to love you if you continue to hurt innocence and that there's not going to be consequences for the consequences for those if you don't repent and come to Christ. So, that. Amen. Well, Water Dad, Daniel, it's, it's been, been a pleasure. Thank you for having me on the pod. Make sure you check out some of his music. Uh, where, where can we find some of your music, my brother? Yeah, uh, you can find me at Thanks Water Dad. Thanks Water Dad. Yeah. Com or, or, yeah, you or can find me on there too. Yeah, but, Instagram uh, or yeah, f- go go on my Instagram. You'll be able to find all my links from there. And uh, yeah, hit me up if you're interested in uh, connecting or you got a question or whatever it may be. I, I try and do my thing to help the the peoples. All right, guys. Have a blessed day. Take care. Peace. Peace. And thank you, Vice City Kava. You guys got to come get a Kava drink. (laughs) Don't forget. forget. These people are super nice. This place is super jumping. Uh, Really great stuff. It's such a vibe out here. So thanks. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Peace. (laughs) 